Uh, and so uh, we will be hearing from Ms. Hyung Mi Choi. Uh, they've been through a, a, a long, very difficult year, I hear. If you want to hear the full story of uh, their ministry, uh, you can tune into the YouTube clip that was broadcasted yesterday, uh, Saturday morning, for the Korean congregation. If you, if, that means you have, you have to speak Korean as well. But um, so there's a little bit overview of what they've been doing this past year. But today, this morning, we have the privilege of uh, hearing from Ms. Uh, Hyungmi Choi, uh, missionary to Guatemala. And uh, so please uh, welcome her. But before we welcome her, let's read the Word of God uh, that she has for us. The Word of God is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 9. Now read from the English Standard Version, and I believe she will refer to it during her message. This is the word of God. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. Amen. This is the word of God. Um, missionary Hyung Mi Choi, thank you for uh, accepting our invitation, and uh, we are ready to be blessed by the message you have from the Lord. Play film. Good morning, Cornerstone, and greetings from Guatemala. How I wish I can see all of you and worship together, but I thank God for this opportunity. I am not a preacher, so don't expect a deep theological message, but I am here today to share with you what God has placed in my heart for the past few weeks. Let us begin with a prayer. Dear God, we come today with a humble heart. We love you and we acknowledge your omnipresence. Even though I am thousands of miles away from Cornerstone Community Church, thank you for allowing me to share your words. Speak through my mouth the words you want to be proclaimed and prepare and open the hearts and ears of those listening today. May only you receive all the glory. In your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My husband and I, with our two sons, moved to Guatemala in 2012 as missionaries. Before then, I have lived in five different countries, attended six different elementary schools, and then lived in Texas for 37 years. When people hear this, many would ask, were you a missionary kid? Or were your parents in the armed forces? No to both questions. We moved around many times because my dad was employed with the Korean Airlines. Moving from country to country, having to make new friends, learning new languages. Maybe God was preparing me for a life as a missionary from then. My title for today's message is Change of Address. In the United States, people fill out a change of address form when they move. It used to be a paper form you had to pick up at the post office and fill out. Now I believe is an online form you fill out and submit. Well, why is it important to fill out this form when you move? It's because you need to inform the senders where you live in order to receive mails and bills. People often move many times throughout their lives. Not many of us are probably living in the same house where you were born, maybe not even the same states or countries. You're one's childhood best friends, whom you could not even imagine your life without as a child. Are they still your best friends or do you even keep in touch with them? On a side note, I still keep in touch with my childhood friends and we are still very close. Anyhow, our lives are constantly changing with each season of life. We are changing. This past year, we were forced to live differently and make drastic changes even in our daily life routines. All this to say, nothing on this earth is permanent. It's hard to fathom, but even the majestic mountains around the world have gone through many changes. Unlike the United States, Guatemala being a developing third world country, there is no postal service. 
The one's privatized service had problems with the government. So the only option now for sending or receiving international mails or any mail is through very expensive couriers like FedEx, UPS, and DHL. Houses do not even have mailboxes and no mails are delivered. I know that's hard to imagine for those of you who live in the States. Maybe some of you think it's convenient because you don't have to receive so much junk mail. This is my home address in Guatemala. The most usage of the address is when we order food to be delivered. In nine years we lived in Guatemala, we lived in five different homes and never had to fill out a change of address form. Many of us may continue to move and change our addresses here on earth until we make the final change of address to our permanent home with our Lord Jesus. The Bible verses you read today in 2 Corinthians 5, 6-9 states, Therefore we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. I want us to meditate on these four verses this morning. Verse 6 tells us that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Well, what does home in the body mean? What is the true meaning of home? Home literally means an enjoyable, happy place where you can live, laugh, and learn. It's somewhere where you are loved, respected, and cared for. You know the feeling of walking into your home after a long day of work, and you feel, ah. Well, home is where you feel completely relaxed and do not have to pretend. It is a safe haven where you can be your true self. But verse six tells us that as long as we are home in the body, we are away from the Lord. So no matter how comfortable and cozy our earth home may be, our heavenly home with the presence of Jesus is beyond our imagination. Our earthly home is temporary. As stated in verse 7, we cannot see our perfect permanent home while living in our earthly addresses. But we live by faith, knowing we will one day go home. Verse 8 may be difficult to profess for some. How many of you can say, I am ready to leave my comfortable home on this earth and prefer to be home with the Lord? That means you are ready to make the final change of address to go home with a capital H and be with the Lord for eternity. Are you ready to make the final change of address? Are you ready if God calls you to come home today, tomorrow, or a year later? During the past year of COVID-19, some or many of you may have experienced deaths of loved ones, family members, friends, or acquaintances. Unfortunately, I also experienced deaths of some people in my circle of life in Guatemala. Today, I want to share with you and honor those three lives who made the final change of address from their earthly homes to their permanent heavenly home. I firmly believe they are home today and celebrating with our Lord Jesus for eternity. Yaelin was a happy four-year-old girl who lived with her mom and three older sisters at the Basurero, literal meaning trash dump. A single mom raising her children worked at the city landfill as a scavenger. All day long, she would gather bottles, plastics, cardboard boxes, and whatever she can gather and sell to earn a few dollars a day to feed her children. November 19, 2020 was a normal day for the family. Mom left to work and the oldest daughter, Paola, who is only 13 years old, is in charge of taking care of her younger sisters. Yaelin was playing right outside her home with her sisters. Paola went inside for just a few minutes when she heard gunshots. One of those shots hit Yaelin in the stomach. She died on the way to the hospital, only four years old. My initial thought was, why? God, why? Yaelin's mom, Cindy, did not attend church and was not a believer. After Yaelin's death, she received such warmth and love from the church and its members, she later accepted Christ as her Savior. It was a huge sacrifice, but Yaelin's change of address led her mom to believe and trust in God. 
This is my friend, teacher friend Kathy. Kathy loved the Lord passionately and served Him by teaching children all her life after graduating from the University of Maryland. She traveled to different countries teaching children. After serving as a children's pastor for 17 years in Maryland, she made the decision to come teach at our school, Christian Academy of Guatemala, fulfilling her lifetime goal of wanting to teach on the mission field. Her laughter, joy, and zeal for life was contagious. She loved her life in Guatemala and felt she was home. She started having some abdominal pain one night and was rushed to a hospital. Kathy was diagnosed with stage 3 ovarian cancer. Seven weeks after her initial diagnosis, God called her home. Kathy made her final change of address on March 2, 2021. Kathy was never afraid of leaving this earth and left a legacy of impacting so many children in different countries. Kathy was a beautiful writer. She expressed her thoughts in one of her blogs this way. My heart longs for my real home where I can see Jesus face to face. I long for that home more than I miss Guatemala when I am in the U.S. and more than I miss the U.S. when I am in Guatemala. Yes, we have work to do here until God calls us home. But C.S. Lewis said that this life is the title page of the book. The title page. It is just the introduction to real life, eternal life, sinless life. And sooner than we might think, the hand of God will turn the page and the real story will begin. The story of eternal joy, eternal celebration, eternal fulfillment, eternal peace. Kathy was ready to make the final change of address. She is home with her Lord Jesus Christ. The third person I want to share with you today is Daniel Perez. Just six days after Kathy went home, Daniel followed. After battling cancer for three years since his senior year of high school, and after his first initial diagnosis, he had multiple surgeries, chemotherapies, radiation treatments, overcoming many milestones, but always giving thanks to God. From his 18th birthday to 21 years old, Daniel proclaimed Philippians 1.21 as his life verse. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. His only fear of dying was the sadness of his family, especially for his mom, my friend Lisa. Daniel made his final change of address on March 8, 2021. Verse 9 says, So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. We have no control, and we do not know when God will call us home. Until then, our goal is to please Him. Are you living a life pleasing God? While we are at home in the body, what legacy will you leave? Let us strive to live a life to prepare for our eternal home when we do make the final change of address. Whether you are in your teen years, 20s, 40s, 60s, 80s, let's encourage and challenge each other to live a life worthy of our God. What legacy will you leave when God calls us to make the final change of address to our eternal home with Him? Thank you, Ms. Hyungmi uh, Choi. You know, uh, this past year, I don't know, it's not the really pandemic, but a lot of us have experienced some, somebody's death uh, around us. It feels like it's not directly the result of the pandemic, but it's a spiritual result. There's a lot of fear, a lot of terror by the evil one and for some reason, more people are getting cancer, more people are passing away, more people are leaving uh, us. And uh, I'm surprised to hear that uh, Ms. Hyungmi Choi also witnessed three people around her that uh, went to be with the Lord this past year. Um, I also can witness the same. Maybe there are those around you, you know, that uh, have gone to be with the Lord this past year, isn't it? 
is a coincidence. I believe uh, we are all under the tyranny of sin. And uh, like uh, she said, to be away from the body is to be with the Lord. And what better place is there to be than with the Lord? As I hear uh, Ms. Hyungmi's message, I'm reminded of the Father's bosom, His presence in the future that He promised for us. Uh, Revelation chapter 21, let me read these, this verse for you. 20, chapter 21, verse uh, 3, it says, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. And then in verse 4, it says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Like C.S. Lewis said, our life is just right now. The life right now is like a book cover. It is just the beginning to eternity. And Revelation 22 talks, tells us about what's beyond that cover as we open the cover to life, eternal life. We find God the Father, a dwelling has provided for a dwelling for us who believe in Jesus Christ. And at that place, the Bible says, He will wipe, Jesus Himself will wipe away all the tears from our eyes, from the death, from the sadness, from the fear that we used to experience in this world, that we are experiencing right now. And Jesus, who has overcome death, He has resurrected and He is risen, and He is the King over death and life, will console us at that time. So, Paul. He tells us that, uh, you know, fear not, uh, have faith, or because Jesus is with us, all that we do on this earth in his name is not in vain. Brothers and sisters, let us not be afraid of the change of address that uh, Ms. Hyungmi said, but as we look forward to the eternal home, we can live today in confidence, not in fear. We can live in joy knowing that we are, you and I are loved, eternally loved by our God the Father. And like our Romans passage is saying uh, last week and next week as well, we are dead to sin and to fear, but we are alive. In whom? In Christ Jesus. Let's uh, hold on to this faith, this resurrection faith that we have in Christ. And although there might be tears, and people passing away, and still there's terror and, and fear in this world because of the pandemic and other things. We do not hope in this world, but we hope in Him who has conquered all death and all fear. So uh, let's hold, hold on to Jesus. Amen? Let me pray for us before we sing. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning. Uh, thank you for uh, missionary Hyungmi Choi's message to us. She has witnessed three people who changed their eternal address to heavenly address. But Father God, she is consoled by the fact that they are in comfort. They are in eternal peace with you because you are God. You, God, are beyond this life. In fact, you promised that you will wipe away all the tears of fear, of sorrow, and of death. From our eyes. So as we look forward to that day, remembering your promise, and looking forward to that day when we change our addresses to the eternal home, help us today to live in faith, to live in confidence, and live in boldness, because you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us, and they lead us. Help us to hold on to this faith Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, who is the author of our faith, who is the author of eternal life. We thank you. And we also lift up um, missionary Hyung Mi Choi and her mission, mission to uh, the schoolwork. Father, thank you for the Christian Academy of Guatemala and all the work that the missionaries are doing there for the local kids, Father God. I pray that you would protect them from the pandemic. Will protect them from evil and give them guidance, 
give them leadership, and give them also all the material need, help that they need right now to not only um, maintain the ministry, but be able to thrive all the more uh, in this time. Bless uh, that Pastor Daniel Choi as he is serving at uh, the Central America Seminary. We pray that you would give him health and strength to continue on the ministry for another 10 years that they committed. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Sa Singh.